So hello, I'm a senior uh, Masters in Development Studies uh, this year at Cambridge at Gormley and Hughes College and I did my undergrad in international relations and I'm very interested in joining um, international organisation framework, so the UN, the World Bank, the World Economic Forum, or uh, working as a civil servant like in, within the government framework looking at um, trade um, and foreign affairs and development. And Thank you. Thank you very much, Jisini, for having me over. And it's a real pleasure to talk to you and share my experiences, if that could help um, anyone out there. Um, but really wonderful having you and speaking with you today. Um, would you like to do a short introduction or um, we'll just go through like how you've ended up at the World Economic Forum? Because I think that'd be really interesting. For Absolutely. People. One year ago, if you'd have asked me, I don't think I would have given you this <laughs> answer for sure. <laughs> Uh, but yes, I'm Srivani, originally from India. Um, I've had about uh, eight years of experience in technology, product, consulting, digital uh, transformation with the Tata Group back in India. Um, but my career brought me to different countries and then I came to the UK on work, um, but uh, on, on a work trip, but that later translated into me being here. Um, I got into the Cambridge um, Judge Business School for my one year MBA program. And I think this one year was a personal reflection journey as much as it was um, a, a student or a growth journey. So where it really made me question, what is it that I'd really love to do? And I'm um, after a lot of, and it was a long journey after, mul after multiple rejections from different parts is when you actually sit and figure out, okay, what is it that you want to do with your life? Um, and that helped me realize that I want to be at the intersection of technology, business, and society, um, and the confluence of it. Um, thankfully, I have had my seniors in such organizations, my professors who helped me talk to um, the right people at the right firms. And one of these conversations um, with my senior at the World Economic Forum uh, made me realize, okay, uh, this is something that I could do too. I could pursue as well. And that's how I landed, but I'm happy to give into more details. Um, but I think throughout this journey, probably what helped me was just sitting by yourself and figuring out what is it that you want to do and where your heart is. Okay, so that's really interesting. You moved from the Tata Group, which is very in the private sector to the World Economic Forum, which is very much like NGO public sector. Um, I guess, how did you find that transition? Like what was, what motivated you to make that transition almost um, after doing an MBA where I think most people probably end up going into the private sector? Uh, that's true. Um, if <laughs> I'm being honest with you, I'm still trying to find the perfect fit because it's sometimes difficult to move from, especially if you've had your career in, a, in the private sector for a long time. It sometimes is difficult to really figure out where do you fit into these large organizations, which really do a lot of good work, but are also slightly different in the in, in, in the way they work. Um, so, uh, but, but I'd say that um, from a very high level, um, okay, there are two things. So firstly, with Tata Group, as well as World Economic Forum, their, their morals are the same. Mm -hmm. Tata Group is the Tata, as, as we all know, um, <laughs> is, is highly acknowledged for its integrity models and the good for society, something which the World Economic Forum and many other international organizations do believe in. Um, so that transition was easier. What I'm trying to figure out is the day-to-day -day tactical logistics on how do I actually fit in the role um, in the work that's present mm -hmm. here. Uh, I think, but secondly, also comes in from an internal drive within you. Uh, I know a lot of my friends have gone into the private sector. Um, and I was also trying for a few jobs um, on that front when I initially started off my career journey um, at, at the Judge Business School, figuring out jobs, careers, and opportunities. Um, but I must, uh, I must uh, talk about my mother who actually instilled um, right from so, so the very first time I heard the World, World Economic Forum was from her. While growing up, she would make us sit and watch the speeches of these mm -hmm. delegates at such forums, conferences, and dreamt of me being there one day. And she's not with us. She's not with me today, but um, in person, uh, physically. But I do believe that uh, it was her manifestation that brought me here. Um, so it's more about an internal drive on where you want to see yourself. 
um, um, and also the morals or the integrals that you believe in, everything else will fall in place. The tactics, the logistics um, on how do you go about roles would fall in place. But I think for you as well, Isini, you want to do a lot in the international development in this field. You've done your bachelor's, master's. So I think for all of us, it's some drive somewhere inside to do, to get mm -hmm. onto this path. That's, re that's really interesting to hear. Um, so you kind of spoke about the motivation side, but like maybe more for the career service on the practical side, what do you think were perhaps the most important steps or like the critical steps you took that allowed you to be like employable to this job? Um, I think that uh, I'd say three things. One is definitely networking. Mm -hmm. Relationships take you longer than any other thing possibly that I've realized over the last two to three years, um, especially with the business, with, with the Cambridge University, you have a lot of professors uh, who have contacts with their students. Mm -hmm. So what helped me personally was I wrote to my professor Jaydeep and a few other professors uh, whom, uh, with whom I shared my interest, where I'd want to be, where I come from. And he in fact has put me in touch with a couple of people. Um, and one of those conversations is what sparked my interest into it. Similarly, um, Sadia, uh, she works with the business school, uh, our careers consultant. She has given me a couple of contacts from the World Economic Forum, WHO, World Bank, UN, to just figure out, you know, the first conversations need not really be about the job, but about your interests and what the organization is doing and does it really match. So I definitely say stay in touch with your professors, with your careers um, team. Um, and you never know which conversation would land you where. That's definitely number one. Um, the second one is all about telling the story that reflects what you would bring to the table. So it has to be, even though you don't come from an international background, like I didn't, I didn't have experience with UN before uh, or such organizations, mm -hmm. but it's all about looking at the role or the job description and figuring out from your own past experience, what is it that you could bring to the table and creating those narratives around it. That will also help your hiring manager or whoever you're talking to, your recruiters to figure out, okay, he or she is really, um, really fits the job. And this mm -hmm. is where we could see. Um, and three is, um, I'd say start early, start your job prep early. Uh, if let's, don't wait till the end of your course to figure out the job or the situation, start doing it from day one. So start early, start networking early, identify skills that you could bring to the table for the jobs that you want. That's yeah. the answer. Yeah, that's a great answer. I mean, kind of transitioning from applying to the job to the actual job, what you were kind of talking about how maybe the logistical different, like the day-to-day -day is quite difficult. So what, what does a day-to-day -day look like for you? working at the World Economic Forum? Yeah, so I work on the digital transformation team with the World Economic Forum, and that's inclined to my previous experience because I come from tech digital, mm -hmm. um, working in the private sector, um, so that really helped. But my work here is slightly different. It's about giving a platform to various organizations around the world, be it the public sector, private sector, um, or the nonprofits, bringing all of them onto the same table, help accelerate the digital transformation within shared learnings. So that's the overarching goal. Um, and from a very, um, my role or uh, perspective that what I, I'm working on right now, um, we I'm working on a couple of things, but uh, primary agenda is to accelerate all of this with a purpose. So we're looking at um, increasing sustainability goals or how do we achieve the UN's sustainability goals that we all know of using digital in various industries. Um, so it could be through case studies, it could be through pilot projects in various um, regions, or it could also be through identifying investments for the selected startups who are really working hard on this ground. So my day-to-day -day responsibilities um, include from a very high level um, um, in two buckets, right? A, identifying who are the participants, what are their needs, um, and what is it that they want from the platform, and how can you accelerate the synergies with shared learnings? So once we've identified all of this, the second one is more logistically. Once we have these, how do you go about organizing these meetings throughout the year mm -hmm. or these shared learning uh, practices that would help 
uh, them come sit together. So the first part was very interesting and something that I've done before. The second part is where I'm still trying to uh, learn to get into it because it's more about meetings, organizations, um, organizing events and um, figuring out, you know, even in small things like in-person versus Zoom versus how many participants, what's the agenda, how do you go about looking at it? And, and we're talking about CXOs, right? So there needs to be a cadence uh, in terms of communication or documentation mm -hmm. or everything that goes around it. Um, but what's more interesting, it's what comes out of one and two. So by the end of this year, I'd be excited to see, okay, what's the result that we've driven? The one year is still a short time span, um, but most of our programs this time are, we have one year goals to identify what is it that we do by November, by December this year. So it'd be exciting to see um, a lot of it. So if I have to identify three skills that are needed for my day-to-day -day jobs, mm -hmm. A is definitely uh, people skills. A lot of this is how do you get teams together? And and uh, you're not even talking about your teams, right? You're talking about teams from other organizations with mm -hmm. their own priorities. Um, the, the, the second one would, uh, would definitely be communication around either the written communication or the verbal communication and how do you go about it um, and three would be perseverance or persuasion so sometimes um, you will have to wait a little longer um, and the planning phase itself takes about four to five months uh, so you which is very different from a private sector where we have two two week sprints and everything has mm -hmm. to come out in two weeks and we go about making the products but yeah persevering through it and uh, looking at the bigger picture and still holding on to things so i mean you've spoken very very positively about the world economic forum so i guess it, it it would be a career that you would recommend to others or um yeah i mean what are your opinions on it compared to the private sector and kind of working in something that a lot of people perceive as being very bureaucratic and perhaps like not worth their effort or time i think um i agree to that as well sometimes um it's but but i think it's more of a personal journey on where you would want to see yourself in a few years mm -hmm. um the positives is definitely that oh by the end of the day you're doing something for the people but uh, the downside to it is also sometimes things are very slow as i said planning phase sometimes take four to five months um and another thing that i'd like to say is most of the large organizations have uh, their jobs on contract basis unlike private sector where most of it is full-time i'd say mm -hmm. large organizations and so you have people coming in switching and switching out that's another thing that you have to consider is it is this the really is this the career that you'd really want to be in let's say you're on a contract for an year or two or private sector would be more um, attractive to you. But um, I, I do think it's um, a personal journey. It's also about identifying the right team and the right role you want. If you are not in that position, sometimes it gets um, uh, sometimes it gets boring or be like, okay, what am I doing by the end of it? Um, but um, I, I think when private sector has its own positives and negatives, yeah. So so is the international space and. Um, bureaucracy contracts um and sometimes yeah patience i think it teaches <laughs> teaches you that but it's it's a personal journey i mean going off that so like what what advice would you give to students who are looking to enter this field i mean from a master's perspective for myself and others but also from an undergrad perspective like what what steps do you think, like what are employers looking for? Um, you spoke a bit about like having to network and make those connections, but I guess ultimately like what, what experiences would you advise students to like undertake to help to make themselves more attractive to these employers? Um, okay, I can talk of it from two different angles. One is the activities that you need to do to, that would help you mm -hmm. with when the recruiters look for you. Um, and the, uh, and the second part is um, the skills or yeah it's it's what are the skills that you want to reflect on to see if you'd really fit in it's it's a it's a match on both sides right you yeah. have to find it right for yourself and so does the organization yeah. so from an organization point of view um when i i was on a panel recently while we were trying to uh, recruit someone to our team um and from that experience i could say that um it, the international organizations are, as as we know, it, they may sometimes be bureaucratic, but at the same time, they're also looking for talent uh, that's agile and can change 
priorities overnight and that's where your private sector experience comes into help so yeah so you so see you need to be quick you need to be not afraid to afraid be afraid to um change priorities or change projects because overnight sometimes funding gets stopped uh, or you know things like that happen and the next day morning you'll be working on something totally different that was probably not there for the last three four months um they're looking for people who are agile not afraid afraid to change and sometimes bring in a new perspective into things so from that perspective um any activity that will help you um today with organizing events at your college level or networking is something that i have already stressed on mm -hmm. uh before so look for experiences that will make you speak with different people who are not necessarily from your own background um that will help because most of these international organizations also have people from various backgrounds so any experience on your cv that talks to um the the talks to a organizing things or having events that are multicultural or multinational mm -hmm. um would help this is in addition to studies and um, everything else i don't want to talk about it because most of us um know mm. <laughs> uh know, know that by the end of it um third thing is project management experience um a lot of uh, something that i've realized is a lot of the organizations need project management skills because uh, these these projects are not as structured as we have in the private sector mm -hmm. so you need somebody to come and organize things so anything certification skills that will help with project management management events multicultural experiences are always good to go um second one have digital or technology skills that would help you for sure um anything with analytics data visualization identifying how do you bring out insights from data would be an asset um for any um, company as such mm -hmm. so grow your interpersonal skills with or events multicultural experiences to us have digital skills with analytics that would be on the activities front uh, but for more from an idea of if you would be a right fit there i think um, as it's probably the previous question answers to it it's it has to be a per personal fit for you okay that's that's very interesting to say um just wondering where, where are you based at the moment geneva um, geneva how how have you found that transition from i guess india to cambridge to geneva they're very um i guess cambridge to geneva is probably more similar than india to cambridge but <laughs> uh that's true i mean uh it's sometimes hard. it's interesting both ways um because when i moved to geneva i didn't know anyone here so it's literally starting things from scratch um and it's also a small city not like london um or, or it does not have these big city vibes um but it's also interesting because geneva has a lot of international organizations so if you want yeah. to make a career in this field geneva is the place to be any day mm -hmm. um and it's and hence you'll also have a lot of people coming in and going out the city is always bustling because the contractual job nature makes people to you know you keep migrating so you always have new people new faces even in the office or outside so that part of it makes interesting and if you know french it's great otherwise you use the google translate <laughs> i'd say okay so so on the whole um i guess this is a big question just are you enjoying it are you happy with like the career choice you've made because it's really interesting from um speaking from a development perspective because i think a lot of people i'm surrounded by want to enter this field but that's like from the general feel i get that's not like the general outlook of student the student population as a whole and i would assume especially in the business school um uh yeah i think in the business school as well i've met um a few people yeah the proportion is not as much as the private sector um but the people i've met are very driven mm -hmm. they know that they want to make a change um at any level um and that's interesting to find such minds uh when it is when you go that way um so your question was what would be my overall yeah are you are you enjoying it are you do you think you've made um like it, i guess it's daunting to like really have to decide in your like mid or early 20s what where you want to like dedicate your whole life or yeah. 50 years to so i guess it's interesting to see if like people are happy with the choices they've made 
Oh, that's true. But you never know. It's a journey. Yeah. So if you ask me at this point, yes, I'm happy. And it's definitely an experience for one to have at some point in their career to mm-hmm. work in an international organization and see what it takes by the end of it. But having said that, a lot of my colleagues have also moved from here to private sector, mm-hmm. which is not private sector, private sector, but you have these responsible innovation teams there as well. You have tech for good teams mm-hmm. there as well. So I, I see the boundaries are blurring. If your ultimate goal is doing good for the society, um, international organizations is one way, private sector is definitely another way. Mm-hmm. So you never know where your journey takes you. Um, and it's always good to find those intersections or conflicts between various industries uh, with the boundaries blurred this time so um you never know this is a journey and I definitely I'm in, definitely enjoying my step right now that, I mean that's really great to hear because it's 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 um you don't hear that with every job so uh, <laughs> it's nice to hear that you're um having a good time um yeah is there anything else that you would like to say or mention about the World Economic Forum or the work you do that you think would be of use to people to know um um I think um with with the work um with the world economic forum though it's a platform i mean i just like to clarify that you know it, it's the platform that enables change mm-hmm. we do not have direct control over how organizations are going to operate but yes the forum does provide a platform and it has done great things in the past so when you if, if you're really looking at the forum i'd suggest talk to somebody and Anybody who's watching this can reach out to me on LinkedIn um, or I'll, I'll share my email ID and um, get a sense of what you are getting into. It's not, it's not always easy. You, it's a few things you only get to know after you join. Mm-hmm. Uh, but to find out if it's a match for you as well, um, then do talk because with the forum, you enable change, but you can't necessarily measure or track the change because it's organizations that do by the end of it. And sometimes we don't have visibility to it. So having these nuances in place helps. Um, but something that I just advise from a very um, uh, broad level is one year back, I wouldn't have imagined I'll be here. Mm-hmm. Uh, or even three years back, I wouldn't have imagined I'd come to Cambridge one day. Um, so just keep dreaming. You never know. And, yeah. and doing what you do you never know how fate destiny changes for you yeah what 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 is what is your like ideal career journey now that you've ended up at the world economic forum that's a pretty good place to be <laughs> oh, that's a great question something that i've been reflecting on over yeah. the past few uh, months as well um i definitely um have not figured that ideal journey yet but i know that i want to do something with education okay. and technology um, mm-hmm. from for countries or for communities that do not have access as much around the world. Um, so these are the broad things that I've figured out. I don't know what's the role, how do I want to go about it? Is it, I don't know, but definitely I'd be in the space of ed tech um, for the communities who don't have enough access in the future. Would, would you consider joining like the political sphere at all or? Would you rather say like on the civil servant kind of non like no an interesting art so I heard from someone sometime was never say no never say never you never you never know where you'd end up yeah open to everything but yeah I want to be in the intersection of digital and education so let's see do you think do you think um I guess a really interesting question is, do you think like digital is really important like for careers in the future? Do you think like an interest in that or like kind of pivoting towards that is definitely the way to look if you're looking for careers in these organizations? 200%. Yeah. Um, I'd never discount it. Though your role doesn't talk to it, let's say you are a project manager for um, an education program or health program in Nigeria. You can't do or you, technology with the awareness of technology you could probably achieve the outcomes at a much faster and scalable rate than you would do without it so i definitely recommend anybody who watches this to start understanding what digitalist technology is do a couple of courses we have a lot of platforms in fact i've been i've been in tech but the sad part of what me is i don't know how to code yet i I've, it was in my beginning of my career for the first six months and then i let it go and some a resolution that i've made this year is i'm going to learn to code because mm-hmm. i don't want to 
you know, like I don't want to get away from opportunities because I don't know the tech side of it yeah. or the coding side of it. Um, so digital is the number one skill that I'd vote any day. Okay. How, um, and it's pretty broad. I understand digital is digital. What's digital? Mm -hmm. in it? And that's probably a different session. Um, I can help you what it was for me, but I definitely say encourage people to think more about it. I guess going off skills as well, do you think, how, how important would you think language skills are? Because that's often one of the requirements in like um, applying to these jobs in international organizations. I agree. So most of these organizations have different teams, but one of the teams that where language is very important and is where you're on the field, let's say on the field in Israel or Nigeria or India, sometimes the local language gets very important. And those jobs have a specific consideration that mm -hmm. learn a particular language. And it's it'll be helpful if you apply to such jobs, your rate of selection is higher. Um, right. Compared to somebody like me, um, who probably doesn't know a language. Uh, I don't know French. So a few of the friend uh, of the jobs that need French uh, may not be looking for me. Having said that, there are other jobs which do not need the field experience and that do not necessarily need the language requirements um, those are more within the organization and actually within forum you don't need a language requirement for most of the jobs but i went through the united nations um world bank and a few other firms i looked at the requirements and they do specifically mention that they need a particular language so be careful on what you want to do and and if i'd recommend you to learn a language i'd definitely say french for most of these international organizations yeah. Um, it's interesting you ex uh, you kind of mentioned field experience and that's a really big thing in the development field, um, which is what I do and what a lot of my classmates do and Cam said who's kind of hosting this um, careers talk does. So I, I guess the question is like how important is it do you think to have field experience, I guess it depends on the job but. Um, that almost seems like, I don't know, from what you've seen or heard around the water Commerce Forum, that kind of seems like a more viable way to enter this field is to go get field experience first and then move to headquarters, which I think is like ultimately a lot of people's goals. Um, but I don't know if you have any advice or like any insight on that or um, what you would recommend people to do. If I look back at my career, I definitely think that's something that I'm missing out on, having a field experience from an international organization. Like I have been a part of um, uh, non-profit projects on the ground, but not to a level where I've represented an organization. Mm -hmm. um, so for somebody who wants to have a career here, here that's definitely a recommendation. But okay. um, because I think when you start planning these large programs, when you come from such an experience, you'd be able to bring um, a value to the table on what would really matter to somebody on the ground which today we don't have the visibility to. We make assumptions um, mm -hmm. that may be right, that may be wrong. But for somebody who has a field experience, I think that would be a lot more valuable um, skill to the table. That's really interesting to hear. And it's really encouraging as well, actually, because I think a lot of um, what I've seen personally online is like, if you go to field experience, you kind of get like pigeonholed into that. But it's nice to know that you can make the transition. Um, I guess any last words before? <laughs> I shut the recording if there's anything else that you want to say, but it's been incredibly helpful. So thank you. From any anyone who's watching it from any part of the world, um, relationship building, having relationships is the single most important thing in today's world. And especially with LinkedIn and many other platforms, people you reach out to people, people do respond to you. Mm -hmm. um, and they're always eager to help you. So and there are ways of reaching out to them, but I'd say um, that anything is possible. Um, I, I would, if, okay, let me just phrase it this way. If I'd go back and tell my 15 year old self um, about things to do or not to do or an advice, I'd say um, anything is possible. Something today which might seem difficult um, is definitely <laughs> something that you could do tomorrow. Um, mm -hmm. But have the right mindset, talk to the right people, um, relationships take you longer. Yeah, link, LinkedIn's a great platform. Um, yeah, oh, yes. You'll be yeah. getting a lot of messages after this. <laughs> I'd love to. I'd love yeah. to if I could help anybody. But LinkedIn, um, when I was searching for jobs as well, I would be there 24 hours, 24 7, sending out 100 messages over a period of one, two months. And yeah, the response rate could be 1%, 2%, doesn't matter. 
that's what the people who respond to you are also eager to take you forward mm-hmm. so um but yes thank you so much that's been really interesting i've loved hearing about your job i would love to do it one day <laughs> um but thank you for taking the time for speaking to me and to cambridge careers um yeah it's really interesting <laughs>